Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Russia moves hypersonic nuclear capable missiles to Syria. So here we have a picture, uh, actually a screenshot of uh, the geography. And I'll go over to the big map. So we have the Khamenei Air Base here in Latakia, Syria. Here's Latakia right up here on the point, follow the cursor. And you can see where everything is relative to the air base. So you got Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, about 300 miles, 350 miles to the south. That's not very far. Um, back this out a little bit. Also, I do want to zone in on this. So you have Beirut, and then you have Sidon and Tyre. Uh, they're in the news as well today. Um for some of you folks who listen to J. Vernon McGee uh, through the Bible, he has a, he's actually passed, but he has a, a series of studies he does where they go through the Bible, and he, he takes you through the Bible verse by verse. He used to make the comment, when you see Sidon and Tyre in the headlines in the news again, you know Jesus is near. So we're living in that time that he saw from roughly 40, 50, 60 years ago. And uh, all these towns up and down the Mediterranean, the ancient names, the modern day places, the same places are in the news. So again, um, takes us to today, June 26th, 2021. I think this actually happened yesterday. Russia has moved MiG 31K fighter jets with the K 47 or the KH 47 M2 Kinzhal nuclear capable air launched ballistic missiles to Kamemim Air Base in Latakia, Syria. So we're going to get into the specifics of these things, but this is a clear game changer in the, in the region. Uh, Sergei Shoigu, he's currently Russia's defense minister. And here are some quotes uh, that he made in the, in the press. And all the stuff I'm going to pull from today are from Russian sources. Okay, so this is not some right-wing kook conspiracy theory report here. Uh, these are the Russians reporting this stuff. These are the Russians putting these things out in their news sources. And they're quoting their leaders. I mean, it is coming straight from their mouths. Now, we are asleep at the wheel over here in the West and not paying any attention. But this is real deal stuff that's taken place in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, specifically, Ezekiel 38 tells us there will be a massive military buildup prior to this invasion. And so the latest installment of that is uh, some MiG-31 aircrafts and um, hypersonic missiles Russia has introduced to the theater. And here's a quote from Russia's defense ministry, a pair of MiG-31K aircraft with the ability to use the latest hypersonic missiles from the Kinzhal complex flew from Russia airfields to the Russian airbase Kamemim in Syria for exercises. And again, that's a quote from the Russia's defense ministry office from Sergei Shoigu, who is the head or the Russian defense minister. He also had another quote. We conducted a successful test firing of a Kinzhal missile from a MiG-31K aircraft at a virtual target in the Mediterranean. The planes took off from a Khamenei air base, or Khamenei base in Syria. And again, that's from, from Russia's defense ministry, headed up by Sergei Shoigu. Now, I got a picture of this bad boy, and it's this white missile under the belly of... Um, of a MiG-31 and the Kinzhal missile, it's also called the dagger. And if you look up, uh, it's a certain, it's a Russian knife, but if you look up the Kinzhal dagger, it's a Russian dagger. Well, that's what this missile is called the dagger. It's a hypersonic missile with estimated speeds up to 10 Mach 10, 10 times the speed of sound or roughly 7,672 miles per hour. Uh, and this is the same missile that Putin oversaw, I believe it was in March of, I think, 2018, two, three years ago. But this is the, uh, when this was tested, he was the one that pushed the button. It was a big deal at the time. And I, I think he put up a, a video showing this missile headed toward Florida in the United States. 
And he's declared, Putin has declared the missile, quote, invincible. Now, uh, for you folks who are uh, spec geeks like myself, I got uh, specs on the Kinzel 47M2 missile, and this is per missilethreat.csis.org, missile forward slash Kinzel. Uh, it's from Russia, obviously. Also called the Dagger. It's an air-launched ballistic missile. Uh, it's been modified to fit the MiG-31 fighter. It's about 8 meters in length, so about 24 feet, give or take a little. Uh, 1 meter in diameter, about 3 feet. Payload up to 480 kilograms. I've seen some of the specs on this as high as 1,000 kilograms. Can carry a conventional or a nuclear warhead. And has a range of about 1,500 to 2,000 kilometers. So, what, 5,000 kilometers, 5K is roughly 3.2 miles. Split that in half. So, what, 120, 160 miles or so. Just guessing off the top of my head. Now, you folks who are more versed in metric conversions, you can get out your piece of paper and scratch that, or if you know it better than myself. So it's operational. Obviously, they brought it into the Syrian theater, and it's been in service since 2017. Now, I also have some information in regards to the MiG-31. You can click on the link below here at uh, military.wikia.org, McCoyan MiG-31. Here are some general characteristics of the plane. It's, uh, Two people, pilot and weapon systems, run it. About 74 feet in length, 44 feet wingspan, height of about 20 feet. Oh, loaded, weighs about 90,000 pounds. I don't know anything about these after burning turbo fans for uh, thrust performance. Excuse me, maximum speed of about. 1,860 miles per hour at high altitude, low altitude, about 930 miles per hour. So has a combat radius of about 450 miles. Um, and again, if you're interested in more specs on the plane, check out this link right here. Click on it and it'll take you to the website. Um, Russia's defense ministry also indicated other military hardware for the uh, Syria war games, including an IL-38 and a TU-142MK anti-submarine aircraft. So, obviously, a nuke would be overkill. On, uh, you know, a nuke attached to, to a MiG-31 would be overkill to sink a ship. But primarily, that's what these things are used for. If you used a conventional uh warhead it'd be to try to sink a ship like a battleship a destroyer or an aircraft carrier so obviously if you're carrying a nuke you have a much bigger target that you want to go after and you want to take out a city or you want to take out some serious uh, munitions or something of that nature but um uh, anti-submarine aircraft as well as the TU-22M3 supersonic bombers. Um, so we got all kinds of Russian military in the eastern Mediterranean. And again, they have the, the air base at Kamemim Air Base in Latakia, Syria. Russia's Navy has assets in the eastern Mediterranean as well, and that's been building since 2018. I'd done a post on that about three years ago. They've got all kinds of ships in the eastern med. The missile cruiser Moskva is joined by frigates Admiral Essen and Admiral Makarov. The submarines Starry Oskol and Rostov Andon are present as well know how good my Russian is. I'm sure those folks who speak Russian understand or can read it. And so again, let the Syrian war games begin. And again, these things were pulled from the Moscow Times. This was not pulled from right-wing kook extreme conspiracy theory. This is from the Russians themselves. They're telling you what they're doing. They're advertising it. They're putting it in their papers. And they're, they're kind of thumping their chest a little bit. I guarantee you, we're not paying any attention. 
over here in the West. At least our press isn't. And so I'll close with Ezekiel 38, verse 2. Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog. Focus on Gog in the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So, you know, and again, these the ancient Magog, the Magogians, what does secular history say about them? Who are they? And in the 7th century B.C., Hesiod the Greek, he identified the Scythians as, as people of modern-day southern Russia. And the interesting thing about that is Hesiod's writings predated Ezekiel, the prophet. So long before Ezekiel, they were, they were called the Scythians. They were called the Magogians. The father of history, uh, Herodotus, labeled the descendants of Magog by their Greek name, the Scythians. And that's in 5th century AD. So that's like 1,200 years after um, Hesiod. So there you have, you know, you got, <laughs> you got Hesiod before Ezekiel. Then you have Ezekiel. And then you have Herodotus, what, 500, 500 years, roughly 500 years after Christ. Um, so it'd be a thousand, 1200 years, roughly 11 to 1200 years from Hesiod. And they're all in agreement that the Scythians, the Magogians, they're all the same. They're the Russians. And then, you know, of course, you know why, why we care about it or why, you know, Bible believing people care about it. 2,500 years ago, the prophet Ezekiel says Russia will be joined by Turkey, Iran, Libya, possibly the Sudan or, and or Ethiopia. And their intent is a future invasion of Israel. And just to walk this thing back about five years from now, so it was August 15th, 2016, Russia acquired its first permanent air base in Syria, the Khamenei Air Base near Latakia. And that's where these uh, missiles and the MiG-31s have, have stationed themselves and have landed. And so what we're looking five years now, the Russians have been building and expanding their military presence in the region since. So we need to pay attention. Uh, I know this stuff will not be pr uh, promoted in our Western press, but we need to pay attention as best as we can. If you're interested, please feel free to continue to follow here at paulthepoke.com. If you're interested and want to follow, type in your email address right here. Uh, hit subscribe. You'll receive notification every time we put some stuff out. Uh, the focus of the blog is uh, it's prophetic, and it also we do some teaching of what the scripture actually says. And we have some guest authors and writers provide practical biblical application advice. We have people who are focused on the gospel. Rodna Epley is focused on the gospel. Have, uh, Joshua from Ghana in Africa provides uh, studies of God's word and does a nice job writing some things up. Paul Beverly does a nice job of some practical application. Michael DeVille is our economic go-to guy. We care about economics because at some point, um, you know, as we trend toward the tribulation, we're going to have hyperinflation. So he is following all things economic, does a super job. His calls have been spot on for the last few years. Highly recommend listening to him as well. So appreciate you guys following along. Again, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com. Have a great evening be following. There's going to be plenty happening. Talk to you later. Bye.